<laughs> my dad was cool. We were living in Cuba. The whole communism thing came in there. Castro took over. How long? So w when you were a kid growing up with your parents, how long did you guys live under Batista before that whole Cuban revolution? What, what year were you born? I was born in 1954. 54, okay. So the Cuban revolution came in 1959. So I was just a kid. Uh, I mean, when I was a kid, I didn't think about Batista or any of that. You know, that's just children don't think about any of that. They just life was normal for for us, you know. Uh, I noticed changes once the Castro took over, like the the properties, the ranch we used to go play in, like we the National Forest, all of a sudden it became, we couldn't go there no more. The government confiscated it. And all the properties were taken and a lot of bad things were happening. I had no clue what was going on, but in the meantime, my dad joined up with the CIA to fight against Castro. So, so I'm but, curious about your father, though. So, like, so, like, in just let's say in this beginning part of the revolution, like right, right after it happened in '59, what was like your you guys all stayed in Cuba? Obviously, you survived I, the revolution. I was in Cuba. I had, well, we thought the revolution. I was a kid, and I, all the propaganda was out there. I thought Fidel was a really cool guy. Right. People asked a lot of Americans. Oh yeah, no, the people going down the street. Hey, Fidel's coming down from the mountains. He's great. What do you mean? Who are they? And all of the ladies and the, the nannies. Everybody's excited about Fidel. I had no idea. I thought he was a great guy to my mother when I kept saying, when's dad coming home? My mother turned around and told me he's not coming home. That was uh, me and my three sisters. She told us that. And she goes, Fidel is not a good guy. You know, he said he just, he killed your father. And that was like, so I went from thinking he was a good guy to all of a sudden shock. And your mom just, you asked your mom randomly one day, when's dad coming home? And she, that's how she dropped it on you? Yeah, well, time was coming by. She had to tell us sooner or later. Because mm. we have no notion of time. My mother was arrested also. She was locked up. They caught her. When they arrested my dad, they arrested her. There were several women arrested, but the Cuban government did not kill the women. And later on, I think the uh, the U.S. negotiated their, their release, kind of like with the Bay of Pigs people. Right. They did a deal like that. Mm. But the CIA guys, like my dad and the other men that were captured that day, including the head CIA guy in Cuba, Sorin Marin, they were all tried in a kangaroo court. You know, the people yeah. are cracking jokes and throwing little paper balls around and laughing and everything. It's like a big party. And then they're all executed the next day. Oh, so, How, yeah. so so your dad was recruited by CIA right after the revolution. And how was he? He was obviously recruited in Cuba. And what what specifically do you, do you know what he was doing for them? Or like, was he what, infiltration was, team? Uh, he was uh, teams of guys that are like Felix Rodriguez. They were going to be an Escambray. Uh, Felix told me the story years later, but he went, actually, he went to, they were training in Nicaragua at the time. That's what CIA took him to. Took him, okay, Nicaragua. That's what I, that's, I mean, of course, I'm a kid. I'm not aware of any of that. This is, I found out this later on as years went by. My mother told me some more stories before she died. So your dad went with Felix to Nicaragua to train. They were down there, all the CIA guys, they were all, they were all part of the same team. Okay. Then later on, he meets Sorin Marin, and Sorin Marin invited him to go into Havana. And Havana was a hotbed, you know, and that's where the Castro soldiers were thick everywhere. And they were they were uh, searching houses one after another, and somebody ran out of one house and ran into a house where they were, where they were all hiding. And then all of a sudden they walked in, they recognized Sorin Marin, and they go, we got the big fish, and then all of a sudden everybody got surrounded, the place, everybody got arrested. So I, they caught him accidentally, but either way, I mean, it, it was a uh, hotbed. This is days before the Bay of Pigs, a couple of days. Oh, really? So it's all going down at the same time. So a couple of days later, uh, after the, I believe after the Bay of Pigs invasion, they were all executed. The six guys in firing squad. The, in a the firing lot squad. Of, yeah, a lot of people were killed in Cuba in the firing squad in those days. It was nonstop. Uh, years later, Castro even put his own top guys in firing squad. He executed his number one general, which right. was, he executed his two top guys, uh, the La Guardia brothers. Both of them, he, so he killed uh, Abrantes. Either they killed him or they put him in a prison where they weren't going to come out alive. You know, so he got, he cleaned house. All the people were top dogs in there. Most communist dictators do that. They killed the uh, top brass. So how old were you when you guys found out that Castro executed your father? He was five years old. You were five years old. God. But after that, we were able to go to Miami. So right after that, you went to Miami? 
sometime after my mother got released, we were able to get out because I was a military age. Military age guys were not allowed to leave. They had to join the Cuban military. Mm. So we, we got out. My mother came back t- to bury my father and she almost never got out. She had to go to, to her grandfather's political rival who was a communist and ask him to help her get out of Cuba. And then he helped her get out of Cuba. So, you know, him and the grandfather went way back. You know, political rivals, but they knew right. each other. Right. They, so, still, they still went to dinners and stuff and had cocktail parties. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they were rivals, <laughs> but they had they had uh, cocktail parties together, whatever. Yeah. So when you got out, where did your sisters come with you? Come to yeah, US with all, you? Yeah, all of us came here. We were kids. My mother was like, you know, they no money or anything. They took mm. everything. So we were political refugees. And did I, your, Sorry to interrupt. Um, did your dad know Rick Prado? No. Because uh, Rick's, oh, Rick's, Rick's way younger. Yeah, he, Never mind. I w- Rick would have been my age. Yeah, exactly. He would have been five or six exactly. years old at the time. Stupid, yeah, yeah. He knew Felix. Mm. Uh, Felix. Your dad was friends with Felix because they trained in Nicaragua. Right, right, right. Felix liked my dad a lot. He came by to visit my mom sometime before oh, she died. Really? Yeah, yeah. He came by the house and all that. Did you ever talk to Felix? Yes. When did you first meet Felix? I met him. A, a few times that I was at a in Miami eating at a restaurant, and he approached me and he goes, I'm Felix, and he introduced himself to me. And we talked. Uh, I was doing a TV show not too long ago when I ran into him on a TV show. I was talking about sharks, and he was talking about Cuba and politics, you know, oh, both wow. on a topic. On a, we were on Spanish TV. We were both guests that day. And then I saw him, and I go, oh, man, it's Felix. And I started talking to him. He was, he's getting older, as I could tell, you know, he's got a lot of years on him now. Did he have any cool? I mean, did, what did he did he tell you a lot of things about your father that you didn't know? Not as much to me. He said to a friend of mine that was uh, they used to go to my friend's house, and he told him that he really admired my father. That's what he told him, one of the people he admired the most. Hmm. So I mean, <clears throat> I never met anybody say anything bad about my father. You know, good or bad, I never heard anybody. Everybody, uh, he was very likable, very popular guy. Right. Plus, from being an athlete, you know, famous athlete in Cuba at the time but you, new generation doesn't know anything about that this is all in the past there's a new people coming up you know the mm. history has been erased in many cases <laughs> <laughs>